right here in Cincinnati. Yeah, real important time for Chicago State to get off to a quick start, to get a little bit of confidence. You don't want to fall down quickly or when you're on the road in a tough environment. Jackson and Ross will come to midcourt. The tip goes to Cincinnati in the fourth meeting between the Bearcats and the Cougars it is underway here in the Queen City. Cincinnati a little 2-3 zone to start out here, kind of matching up. Rubles just inside the arc. Thomas will fire a three way off the mark. Nobody grabbed the rebound. Jelon Gwynn had it, but couldn't convert it. Well, if you're playing the Bearcats, oh, uh, stage, you've got to know, you have any chance to win at all, one thing you've got to do is rebound the basketball. Right. You can't allow those second and third possessions for a Cincinnati team that really can crash the board. Cincinnati got two shots off on that first possession down the floor, but came away empty, and now the Cougars will have a chance to strike first. Chicago State comes in at five, but it splits pretty even. Five wins all at home, <laughs> six losses all on the road. Yeah, and they played some pretty tough games on the road. They've been to Bloomington to play IU, and then went to Illinois on the road as well at Bradley. So, I mean, they played some quality teams. Rubles got a piece of that shot from the left side. And the Bearcats back to the offensive end. Kilpatrick, a long three off the back iron. He had 23 on a Saturday. Outlet pass intended for Rosenberg. Somehow he catches up to the basketball and is able to lay it up and throw before going out of bounds. Excellent pass to throw in the head of him so he could run under the ball and then get it in. And when uh, Kilpatrick took that jumper, the other guard didn't rotate back, left the back end wide open for the layup. Keel Thomas along the baseline. Attempt is no good. Foul. Called along the baseline. There you see Tracy Doty now in his fourth season. Trying to build up that program early on in his career. Had spent pretty much the entire non-conference schedule on the road. They were here two years ago today. And in that stretch, they were playing 13 consecutive road guarantee games. If you're not familiar with what a road guarantee game is, that's when you go on the road, get a big check. And the and guarantee Arnick's comes pretty much for, you know, you're yeah. going to be guaranteed yeah, a loss. Guaranteed <laughs> loss. I know I had quite a few of those games myself. <laughs> but he was very excited about this team. You know, he had a couple guys that aren't playing that he thought would be playing. But the way they've just been so competitive and even off the court academically, he's very proud of the job they did academically. Shaquille Thomas goes to the free throw line following the foul on Matt Ross. Thomas gets both. He's 15 of 21 on the season from the strike. Coach Cronin has made a substitution less than a minute and a half in. Troy Copain, the freshman, replaces Jelon Gwynn, the junior. Spinning along the baseline, Eddie Denard. He's a transfer who's done really great things for Coach Dilty so far this season. Doesn't connect, tipped away, and goes to the Chicago State bench. Cincinnati will have the basketball. Presence on the court, but off the court, he acts the right way and he's really controls this team both places. Foul called down along the baseline. Justin Jackson is trying to get to the hoop. Picks up his first personal a senior out of Arkansas. If that last name is familiar, it's for a reason. He is the nephew of Bulls legend Scotty Pippen. Pippen driving. Jackson could have get a piece of it, and what a move by Quentin Pippen. Right on cue, getting on the score sheet for the first time. Again, you got to know your scattering court. Quentin, the left-hander, kind of played him to the right side. Joe Patrick trying to answer, didn't know the first attempt, but did on the putback. Again, giving up an offensive board, leading to that basket. First field goal today for the Bearcats. First two for Sean Kilpatrick. Oh, Steve, sloppy with it down low. Not quite as effective as they were on the last possession. Well, just a good individual play there, kind of off balance, throws it up a little half hook, and didn't even use the glass to control the ball, but got it to go right in the net. It's a solid individual play. Probably practiced that some with his uncle. The backer stops and pops. Scotty still working with the Bulls organization, so he lives in Chicago while the NBA season is going along. Quinn misses that shot. Cocaine racing the other way, and it's poked away intended for Justin Jackson. No, they say Jackson touched it last. That Clark Rosenberg got a piece of it, but that's turnover number two for Cincinnati. Certainly something to keep an eye on today, Kyle, because this Chicago State team has forced double digit turnovers in the last 35 consecutive games. Yeah, they do a very good job active with their hands, getting deflections, leading to steals. And on the other hand, Cincinnati usually takes very good care of the ball. 
statement. I, I think what we talked about maybe just uh, not quite focused in to start the game here. Cincinnati a little bit careless with the basketball. Cougars are sloppy in giving it back. Then Kilpatrick loses it and regains control. Sanders on a pretty give and go. Missed it, but Justin Jackson finds it on the rim and knocks it through. Jackson really has picked up his level of play, crashing the offensive board that time. But you're right, nice give and go offensively. Justin coming off a double-double on Saturday in a win against Middle Tennessee State. He was 7 of 8 from the field in that contest. Bearcats take it back and quickly get to the offensive end. Cougars doing a nice job so far, Kyle, getting to the perimeter and not letting Cincinnati find any open looks from three. The important when you attack a zone, you don't want to just pass around the perimeter. They try to get into the gaps, maybe set some picks in the perimeter and swing the ball, but inside out attack. Jackson had a good look, but didn't put enough on it. Rubles was fighting for the rebound, ended up being knocked out of bounds by the Cougars. Cincinnati has four offensive rebounds thus far. Now Jackson going to the left hand, a little half hook, but Rubles uh, couldn't quite get it over the front of the rim. Still Bearcats ball. Denard and Pippen swiped at that loose basketball. Now we've got a Pippen in the lineup, and now we've got a Duhon, so we did ask. No relation. No relation. Right. <laughs> Cincinnati's third turnover trying to get it in along the baseline. Pippen attacking, kicks it out. Rosenberg, three-pointer not close. Rosenberg shouldn't be uh, too nervous. I mean, he had one of his best games, of the, actually the best scoring game for his team of the year when he went to Bloomington for value. Hoosiers at 27. Rubles way too strong. Jackson there to collect. Gets underneath, got another offensive rebound, but didn't Put quite enough mustard on it as he tipped it back up. Well, you're kind of playing with fire, though, if you continue to give up the offensive board. Eventually, going to go in. Pittman has another plan, drilling a three-pointer. He has five. Comes in leading the Cougars in scoring at just over 14 points per game. Chicago State back on top by a point. The one thing Coach Dildy did say as we walked into the shoot around, as Kilpatrick knocks down a three, was it? His team is competitive. It didn't matter where they're playing or who they're playing. They were good. Really happy about their toughness. Feels yeah. that they have good depth. Boy, Gary has it knocked away. And we have our first timeout here inside of Fifth Third Arena. Cincinnati at four coach. Never have. That's the first I've seen it live. <laughs> they didn't They didn't bring the Binturong in, no, in 97 no. when you brought your Moorhead State team here. To well, if they did, Cincinnati. I was tied up in the huddle. I, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> it was a busy day for, you, for your squad that day as Cincinnati was victorious. Early on in your tenure at Moorhead State. You had to bring that up, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Johnson from the corner. We didn't break out the game for him, so thank goodness. <laughs> Cincinnati turns it over. And Chicago State has done a good job at limiting some of the opportunities for the Bearcats with three of 10, shooting the basketball, three turnovers so far, and therefore they're hanging around, hitting a few timely shots of their own. I'm a little bit surprised with the fact that Cincinnati didn't come out with a lot more energy. I mean, that second half, the last time out against Middle Tennessee State, things really kind of fell in place. They started clicking and playing very well. And if you're a player, you know, you get things rolling, you want to get back on the court as quickly as you can. Pick up right where you left off in that game. Sean Kilpatrick, 23 points. Justin Jackson with a double-double had 16. Kevin Johnson finds the score sheet for the first time today with a three-pointer from the right side. Well, the made basket gives the Bearcats a chance to get into that full court pressure. Quentin Pippen off balance this time. Doesn't find the hole. Yeah, and not only a, an off-balance shot, but no one in rebounding position. So the Bearcats immediately to the other end of the offense. Now Cincinnati, or Chicago State has to uh, play another 30 seconds of defense. Jermaine Sanders wide open on a nice pass from Titus Rubens. A good ball moving against the zone that time. Sanders got his feet set, knocked it down. Five different Bearcats have scored in the first six plus minutes. Corey Gray from the top of the key fails to knock it down. Gilpatrick three point rims off. If that one falls, then Cincinnati has suddenly <laughs> yep. picked up right where they left off on yep. Saturday. All of a sudden they're on roll, aren't they? And it was a good look, and he's wide open, just didn't get it to go. 
now the biggest lead of the ball game for the Bearcats. This is kind of what I thought we'd see a little bit more out of Chicago State, trying to use some of that shot clock. Shorten the game if you can. Make the Cincinnati play a little bit more defense than they want to. I like to pass it around, and it works out as Clark Rosenberg drains the three. He has five. Comes in a 44% shooter from downtown. Yeah, excellent shooter, especially when he has time like that to get set. Defense a little slow and reacting. Bearcats with three three-pointers made thus far. Chicago State a pair. Johnson looking for number four. Does not find it, and suddenly maybe the Bearcats will trigger hit, trigger happy from beyond the arc. Yeah, sometimes when things come a little bit easy over a stretch, you, you get into the uh, false hope, if you will, that some taking some of those quick shots as opposed to running your offense and getting everyone in position. Now, if the shot doesn't go, where maybe get some offensive goals. Joe Payne and Jackson set to return in the next whistle for Mick Bronin. Ray slowly setting it up. Shot clock is down to seven. Pippen thought about one from NBA range. Instead, drives and the finger roll falls through. They got a good head fake to kind of get the defense off balance. And uh, Jermaine Lawrence a little slow in moving over. Just kind of did the old A defense reach with one arm. Pippen didn't do much last time out against SIU Edwardsville. Cincinnati answers right back. Let's we'll see if that gets Kale Patrick going now. Get that first three-pointer to fall down. He can heat up in a hurry. He has eight to start this game. Down low, Nate Duhan with a floater along the baseline. And suddenly these teams exchanging baskets and the pace picking up. Yeah, it, it, early there, we had trouble scoring the ball. And now all of a sudden, everybody's scoring. Bearcats had just 21 points in the first half on Saturday against the Blue Raiders. They have 18 in eight and a half minutes in the first half here today. Nearly 21, that one came off the window and the iron. Gray floater in the lane, no rubles, trying to grab the rebound, goes out of bounds. Started Jaquan Parker, an undergraduate student assistant for Mick Cronin, went overseas, played briefly, decided it wasn't for him, and has come back to Cincinnati, where he now sits on the bench, no longer wearing a uniform after 799 points, almost 500 rebounds, an incredibly tough player for this Bearcats program over the course of his career. He'll be a big plus this team just because he's been through the battles. He can talk to the players and he can get out there and practice with them as a student. So, uh, you know, a body where they're maybe a little low in numbers at times, but just that toughness he's going to bring and show some of these younger players. Juan hits a big three pointers over the course of his career. Went to the NCAA tournament three times since he's hit four three pointers on nine attempts. Half their shots have been from beyond the arc. Six of 18. Cincinnati from the field, so just two of nine from inside of the arc. Junior shooting 44%. That's right at their season average. Here's Pippen trying to get a ground copain, and he extended that arm into him, yeah. called for the hand check. And I'm still surprised. Here we are almost into December. The players still have that reaction when they're called for that foul. It's automatic. You extend that arm with a hand check, it's, it's going to be a call, it's going to be a foul. Points in the paint in favor of the Cougars, eight to four. Fresh shot clock for Chicago State as we approach the midway point of the first half. Rosenberg driving in the lane, floated it up, but didn't fall through. And Jackson was there to collect his game high fifth rebound. Kilpatrick wide open, and you cannot leave a stone cold score that wide open top of the key. He had time to check the wind, see which way it was blowing everything. Just somebody got lost in the defensive assignment. Double figures for Kilpatrick for the 11th time this season, 88th time in his career. And that'll get a timeout from Tracy Dildy. That's Sean Kilpatrick. Let's take another look. Yeah, just see how much space there is. As you see, Pippen comes over, kind of gets caught up in that down screen and, and real late coming out there from a different angle this time. Just gets his feet set, nice lift, good foul through, straight line of the basket, nothing but net. The assist goes to Gilon Gwynn and the Bearcats five times on seven made field goals. That's certainly a percentage as a coach. You're pretty happy with Yeah, going to be very happy with that. And then just try to extend up to the defensive end, maybe pick up the press a little bit more, get some other easier baskets, make that shooting percentage continue to rise. Bearcats' lead is five. Chicago State is led by as many as two. Cincinnati's largest lead was six. In about two and a half minutes. Let's check that three and a half minutes ago. Officials today, Brent Hampton, Doug Sermons, and Ted Valentine. 
all came over and shook your hands, though. You <laughs> yeah. must not have gotten in much trouble with those three. Yeah, they're, they're all friends. During your me. years in Moorhead State. <laughs> they're friends with me now that I'm not coaching, sure. <laughs> they wouldn't talk to me when I was on the sideline. <laughs> three pointer right in front of the Cincinnati bench. Matt Ross finds it. He has five, just a 28% shooter from beyond the arc. Quickly brings the Cougars back within two. Jackson off the mark with Jermaine Sanders. Another offensive rebound. Putback is good. Yeah, just giving the effort to go to the offensive glass. You'll get a lot of board just by giving that effort, taking the chance the ball may go to the open spot. So you got to keep moving. You just can't stand and let it come to you. Rosenberg underneath draws the foul as he cut along the baseline. Look at that last play you see in the shot missed by Jackson. It fouls to the open spot there. A little head fake to kind of get the defense near and goes up and uses the backboard to finish. Six of the Bearcats, 15 rebounds have come off the offensive line. They have six second chance points. Titus Rubles in and Shaquille Thomas will take a seat. Rosenberg at the free throw line, one of the best on this Cougars team, 81% on the season. There it is, the old broadcaster <laughs> jinx is. That is only his ninth miss this season. Rosenberg, an Illinois native. A fantastic job this season for Coach Dildy. There's a step inside the arc, and he drains it. Good execution by the Bearcats. Half court set there. Sanders took his time, got everything square. Jermaine Jr. out of New York. He's actually one of four Bearcats who played against Chicago State when they were here two years ago. Today, Cincinnati won that game 95-60. to Sanders had three points, two rebounds, playing 17 minutes. The Bearcats team that ended up going to the Sweet 16. Bearcats bench dominating the bench points thus far, 10 to 2. Turnover for Chicago State. Eddie Denard couldn't hold on to it. Bearcats waste no time getting to the offensive end, and Geelong Quinn wastes no time popping a three pointer. And you know, it kind of went back to what you said when Kilpatrick made that first three for the Bearcats, and it seemed like everybody relaxed. Now all the threes are starting to fall. Yvonne Gwynn, not known for his three-point shooting, only 27%, but just did a good job of getting balanced and following through right to the rim. Six three-pointer to fall through for the Bearcats. Four different guys have hit a three, and then Yvonne Gwynn a little bit too aggressive trying to get to Kurt Karras and take it away. Yeah, that, that's a foul, though, that I don't think Vic Cron will be too upset about because it was an aggressive play trying to come up with a steal and that full-court pressure. And that gives Cincinnati another chance, really, just to reset their pressure. A few more seconds for Chicago State to get it across midcourt. Karras does just that. Feeds it over to Nate Duhon, who's done a good job. Splitting his duties, whether they're coming off the bench or starting off the bench today. Rubel's got a piece of that one. Fifth block for the Bearcats already. Still have eight minutes and 20 seconds to play in the first half. Win thought about a three, then got rid of it to Rubles. Miscommunication that I don't think Titus knew it was coming. Yeah, he threw an arm high pass too, which the defense has a better chance to get into a steal or deflection. Matt Ross misses on a wide open three. Kilpatrick back the other way is fouled and will head to the strike. First, a timeout on the floor. Nick Cronin and the Bearcats lead. He's got good shooting touch, he's very active going to the basket. The only difference is that he's looking in the mirror. He's a lefty as opposed to Scott using that right. But uh, he's had a good first half here so far for the Cougars. Scotty's sister is Quentin's mother. And as I was saying earlier, Scotty living, still owning a house in Chicago. Quentin takes some of his teammates from time to time. They go out to Uncle Scotty's house, and Scotty made decent money during his time in the NBA. So what does that mean? Well, he has his own indoor basketball court at his house. Sure he does. you got to have your own indoor gym, but So they how go cool out there that? and get to shoot around with Uncle Scotty from time to time. It, it'd be kind of difficult to say, nah, I don't think I want to work out today. Yeah. No, we're going to Scotty Pippen's indoor gym. <laughs> right. Do you, he calls up his teammates and says, hey, anybody want to shoot today? You got a place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got, I got a place we can get in. Are you sure? Yes. 
Sean Kilpatrick in the meantime at the free throw line wearing the silver shoes for the second consecutive game. It worked out pretty well for him on Saturday as he found 23 points breaking those special edition shoes out in the holiday spirit. Second free throw rattles around and falls through. So he has 13 following up to 23 from Saturday. The Bearcats started this game one for five from downtown. And since then, they are five for six. Long outlet pass. Chicago State recovers all that. That's the second time Kyle we've seen him just fire it down the yep. court. Somebody take off for it and hope they catch up with it before it goes out of bounds. They do a real good job of looking over the top because sometimes since they get sucked in, they've had some success coming up with some steals and that pressure. So everybody maybe takes a step or two too far up. And so by continuing to look over the top and again, just throwing it long and let your teammate run under. It was Duhan that caught it, collected it, and then found Rosenberg following. Kilpatrick's three no good, but he fouls it and gets his shot blocked going hard to the hoop after the offensive rebound. <laughs> Not three Cincinnati plays weren't a piece of that one. Yeah. <laughs> Between Justin Jackson and Titus Rubles, he got plenty of athleticism, plenty of defense. And they were both trying to track that one down. Rubles, however, has called for a personal foul. Pretty good move by Rosenberg using his body to kind of protect himself the ball as you see going strong. To get it up quick. We so see a whole lot of contact there. Rosenberg knocks through the free throw. He has nine. First personal foul on Titus Rubles. Fourth team foul on the Bearcats. So a couple quick whistles and then that kind of died out over the last 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I think sometimes officials will do that. They'll kind of set the tone early, let the players know how they're going to call it. And then when the players realize that, they maybe back off of some of the aggressiveness, so then they kind of let a few more things go. In fact, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Sometimes we don't see teams in the early going of contests play some zone just to keep away from that early foul trouble and then get into the man-to-man -man defense. Sanders, the three from the right wing. Nothing but net. And Jermaine Sanders, a force for the Bearcats here in the first half and a double figures for the third time this season. Chicago State, a shot very early in the shot clock. Bearcats able to get the rebound. Justin Jackson has been pretty quiet offensively, tacking on two more of the Bearcats. Have their biggest lead of the game. Yeah, nice move. Just took his time, very patient, let the defense get away, didn't come with the double team, and then back his man down and scored. Nice play. Quick release three. And an answer for Nate Duhon. Chicago State is battling. I mean, they, they knew coming in they were a little bit undermanned, so they were trying to make up with that competitiveness. Got to get some stops on the defensive end, though. Scored 27 so far here in the first half. Cincinnati has not given up more than 67 points to an opponent through their first 11 games. T-Long wins, three-pointer, no good, but another offensive rebound. Let's look. Defense to close out on Sanders. Kilpatrick got the look at the three as he took it. Titus Rubles was knocked over by Eddie Denar. Good oh. ball move, excuse me, Tom. Good oh. ball move that time by the Bearcats. So inside out, opposite, kick it back around. No one, the ball doesn't really stick in anyone's hand. You see, continue to move a little shot fake, and move it back around. Oh. Put a good oh. pick there. Oh. Draw that foul. Oh. Foul on Denar, and that's a player we talked to. Coach Doty about quite a bit this morning at shoot around. He's very happy with how he's come in. You talked about what a good example he has set as a senior stepping into this program, but somebody who's been contributing on the court as well and has been very quiet so far in this ball game. Yeah, he, he has. Uh, he's kind of hadn't got into the rhythm of the game. Jermaine Lawrence in for the first time for Cincinnati. He's trying to get rid of it. Had a hard time and picks up a foul. Pippen picking up his second. That could be a problem. Yeah, you've got to stay out of foul trouble if you're trying to pull an upset against a, a, maybe a little bit more physical, a little bigger team. And uh, ways you can do that, though, take care of the basketball. You can't turn it over. you got to get defensive rebounds. You can't let those second and third shots. And then on the offense, then you, you want to shorten the game a little bit maybe, but then also you got to shoot a high percentage. Bearcats working right now with an eight-point lead and three freshmen on the floor. Sanders a junior and Jackson a senior, the only two non-freshmen in the current UC lineup. Sanders with a great job to pick up that offensive rebound and keep the possession alive. 
His three doesn't go, but Johnson hits the rebound to him. Then a foul is called, and the Bearcats did everything to try to put points on the board that time, and Quentin Pippen just livid after the foul was called in the lane. I think partially because he doesn't like the call, and partially because it's his third. Yeah. That's right. Take a look and see the shot goes up by Sanders, and he does a good job of following them. The replay, Pippen right there at the bottom of your screen. And looked like he may have gotten a clean rebound there. Might have a little argument there. <laughs> he thought he finally ended the Bearcats' offensive. Possession. Instead, he's headed to the bench now with 5 12 to play in the half with three personal fouls. Bearcats have 10 offensive rebounds in the first half. Marcus Stokes Starks will come in for him, 6'5, 210 out of Calumet City, Illinois. Hasn't seen a whole lot of minutes this season. It's just his ninth game. Johnson hits both free throws. He has five off the bench. Comes in averaging three and a half points per game, a local product. Bearcats lead is back to double figures with five minutes to play in the first half. Three pointer well short. Chicago State should have had the offensive rebound. Probably should have had a steal as well. Instead, a Justin Jackson play. <laughs> Nothing went the Cougars' way as the Bearcats went down the floor. Important period right now, though, for the Cougars with the, your star out of the lineup with the foul problems. You've got to be patient, work to get good shots every time down. Nothing quick, nothing that leads to the, uh, layups on the other end by taking some bad shots or even turning the ball over. Here's Rosenberg splitting two defenders, but put it up short. A good drive, just didn't finish. Kevin Johnson's look does not fall. Time Chicago State able to box out and get a rebound. Jackson has eight rebounds. Johnson the other way and a block is called as he drives the hole. Matt Ross was there. That is his second personal foul. Yeah, and that's exactly what we talked about. Corey Gray with a quick shot on the one end leads to a transition Corey basket or attempt. Ross. See, going to the basket, Ross just could not get there, get set outside of the, the arc. So a really easy call from the officials. Johnson on the season, six of nine from the free throw line. He's now played in all 12 games of his freshman campaign. Coach Dilty over there. He knew that this one could get away from the Cougars in a hurry if they weren't careful. They've done a good job at, at hanging around, but as you mentioned, now they're on that precipice here. They've got four minutes left yeah. in the half. If you don't do something now with a couple of your starters in foul trouble, this one will get away will. from you before you go to the locker room. Real important four-minute stretch here to kind of get a little confidence going into the second half. Stay within range until you get your starters back in start the second half. How about this stat? Chicago State has nine rebounds total. Justin Jackson has eight rebounds by himself. Cincinnati has 26. You want to talk about being in the holiday spirit? That's my stat man, Mike Paul, giving. <laughs> Holiday spirit from Mike over to my left. Mike's a gamer, though. You know, he took a shot there before we started. One of the shoot around balls came over. I was a head. little worried we we're going to have to call the bullpen for a backup <laughs> stats guy today. No Re blood, no foul. That's right. Rebound number 27. He's a former Division One athlete himself, so he bounced back and was able to go. I'm going to knock him out of the starting lineup. 320 to play first half. Tom Glitter and Kyle Macy. Happy to be with you. Hope your holiday shopping is done as the ball is knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Bearcats. Cincinnati leading by a Baker's dozen. As they and on the offensive end of the glass, a couple of three-pointers. That one just inside the three-point line, but real good touch on the basketball from the left side. Both the left side of the basket as well as on top of the right. So a real good balance and then an extra lift if you get that scoring from someone other.